Our last speaker is Sarah Mueller. Sarah is a PhD candidate with Dr. Tony Vinn studying agronomy in the College of Agriculture and will be graduating this summer. She is very passionate about corn research, but sometimes gets a little too much excitement with her. Two summers ago, her enthusiasm for her research caused her to accidentally cut her hand very badly on a corn stalk because she was moving too fast, resulting in a trip to the emergency room, six stitches, and two weeks of not being able to work in her experiment. Who knew corn was that dangerous? Outside of corn, she loves to run and has completed her first full marathon last fall. Sarah will now present her 3MT talk entitled, Keeping Nitrogen Fertilizer in Our Corn and Out of Our Water. Driving around Indiana, you may have noticed something prominent in the Hoosier landscape. Corn. Corn not only dominates the fields in Indiana, but across the U.S. Corn Belt, one of the most productive agricultural regions in the world. But have you ever stopped to think about what it actually takes to grow all of this corn? In elementary school, we learned that plants need three things, water, soil, and sunshine. Corn needs these things too. However, these highly productive systems also need added fertilizer, particularly nitrogen fertilizer. Corn needs nitrogen to grow a large ear, the part of the plant that we use for livestock feed, fuel, and food products. Unfortunately, Nitrogen fertilizer is also an environmental hazard. Once applied to the soil, it moves down with rainwater, entering the groundwater, rivers, and streams, where it contaminates our drinking water and causes algal blooms, like we've seen in the Gulf of Mexico. To prevent all of this, a key issue in the Corn Belt is to make sure that the nitrogen fertilizers we apply and that farmers pay for is taken up and used by the crop so it can't be lost to the environment. The more we use, the less we lose. And the solution to this might just be in the timing. This is where my research comes in. For practical management reasons, farmers typically apply nitrogen to corn early in the spring, before or shortly after corn is planted. However, corn doesn't need most of its nitrogen until later in the summer, in June or July. In my research, we asked the question, if we moved our nitrogen applications until later in the summer, in June or July, could we, make, could we increase how much of the nitrogen ends up in the corn, therefore decreasing our losses to the environment? The answer, yes. For the past four summers, my research has shown that if we split our nitrogen application into two smaller applications, we can increase how much of the fertilizer is taken up by eight to 20%. Furthermore, if we move the entire nitrogen application until early July, we can maintain the same grain yields, but decrease how much fertilizer we need by 10 to 20%. Together, this shows that by moving our nitrogen fertilizer applications, we can increase how much we use and decrease how much we lose. This is a win-win for everyone. So next time you're driving by a cornfield, remember that farmers and researchers are always working together to increase our efficiency and decrease our impact on the environment. When it comes to keeping nitrogen fertilizers in our corn and out of our water, the solution might just be in the timing. Thank you. And our first place winner is Sarah Mueller. Can keeping nitrogen in our corn and out of the water.